<laughs> and uh, they would also, they are also likely to come more frequently with the improved infrastructure in terms of speed rails, in terms of uh, ferry uh, network with the additional ferry terminal as well as a bridge connection. And uh, I can answer your question on shopping because uh, I, I have not looked at the numbers on shopping. Um, even though Macau is growing on Macau, the last year figure on, on um, retail spend in Macau is about 20 billion US, and it's been growing very healthily at about 15, 20 percent over the past five years. But I, I really don't have the the facts and numbers to answer your question on shopping accurately. I apologize for that. Calvin, I could just add to your response on sure, that. Sure, please do. Uh, I get um, a lot of queries from my clients and investors. Very typical to what you just asked, uh, Elliot. You know, you would spend fifty dollars on gambling, and you know that's about the sum sum of it all. Whereas the typical Chinese would spend anywhere from five hundred five thousand. And the way I explain it is very simple. If you had a hundred dollars in your pocket, you go to Vegas, you spend fifty dollars on the on the food, you spend another thirty dollars on the beer and you blow $20 on a blackjack table, and you say, I had a great time, right? The, man, the Chinese, not just the mainland Chinese, but the Chinese would go to a casino with typically, let's say, $1,000. Let's keep it at the same $100. They spend $10 on food. They would invest the remaining $90 at the table because it's not an entertainment. It is an investment from which they believe they can get a return on. And I think that's the best way to explain it. They actually believe that they can generate a return on that, and they would devote nine hours play, 20 hours play, because they believe they can get a return out of it. Now, if they lose, it's bad luck. But they come back, and they try again the next day. What do you think? Very good answer, and we have that. And when they win, the 90 bucks become 180, they will spend another 60 bucks on food. <laughs> are, are there more questions for Kelvin before we close uh, today's proceedings? One last one, Martin. Uh, there's going to be massive numbers of uh, mainland Chinese coming into uh, uh, into Kotai uh, at the conclusion of the, the, the construction of the six plus one resorts. Um, do you see a bottleneck emerging in terms of getting these people across the borders, particularly in the Lotus Bridge border? Um, is there a possible natural constraint that's coming in through uh, under underdeveloped infrastructure? Uh, I, I think, as we're speaking right now, there'll be a new border. Be, uh, there's actually a new border under construction in, in Gong Bay, right beside Gong Bay. Uh, there's a new border. and. There would also be an expanded uh, sort of border in terms of the new ferry terminal. There will be expanded immigration facilities, as well as in terms of uh, the connection with Lotus Bridge. They are talking about expanding the hours of uh, immigration, operating hours. Um, so I think by and large, border is not a concern when all these are in place. I, I think that's a relevant question though. It, it is the pace of Macau infrastructure development in terms of light rail, in, in terms of the man-made island to transfer mass number of people when they arrive to the various location in Macau. I think that'll be a challenge that we have to monitor closely. All right, thank you very much. And with that, I would like you to put your hands together. Thank uh, Calvin for thank us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Calvin. All right, so thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, please, uh, if you could do us a favor and provide any feedback you may have to the organizers. And again, just as a reminder, we do have a thank you reception cocktail in Milan, room 2101, which is uh, either the corridor next, day, uh, next row down or the one after. So thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.